So now as we continue our look at gills as a respiratory structure, we'll entitle the next flowchart gills 2. And what we're going to be now looking at is more specifically the structure of gills that's found within bony fish. So the structure of gills that we see in bony fish. These are going to be a large class of fish that have a very specialized structure that's worthy of understanding. That specialized structure will include something known as the gill arch. And the gill arch is going to be a sort of region of cartilage. It's made up of cartilage with two rows of what are known as filaments. Two rows of filaments. This is structure is going to play hand in hand with the function of how gills work in bony fish. Now these filaments are going to have specific names. Filaments in bony fish gills are going to just resemble flattened plates. So we'll state that filaments are sort of equal to uh, flattened plates in terms of their shape and how they look. And this is going to more technically be called lamellae or lamellae, whatever you want to call it. So these are basically going to be can replace now the word filament with lamellae or lamellae. Cartilage are going to be with two rows of lamellae and that's going to represent the gill arch. In addition, the gill arch or the gills specifically I should say, they're going to contain arteries. Arteries are very important because arteries are going to have blood within them. They're blood vessels. They're specifically going to be in the gills of bony fish afferent arteries and also efferent arteries, both of which you need to understand the distinction between. In an afferent gill artery, this is an artery, a blood vessel, in which blood will be sent to, towards the filaments, towards the lamellae. So towards the filaments. Whereas in the efferent artery, you can already guess right here, so if blood is going to the filaments, in the efferent artery, blood is going out of the filaments. So we'll write that down. Blood is going out of the filaments. So now what does this mean? This is basically going to define the area of exchange of oxygen and other gases and just overall uh, of major exchange in uh, the fish that we're studying, the bony fish. All of this, both of these arteries will be directly connected to what are known as capillary beds. And these are familiar to us. We've seen these in circulation before. Whenever you think capillary beds, think a perfect and ideal place for lots and lots of exchange to occur. And that's exactly what we see here. Lots of gas exchange, nutrient exchange, waste exchange between blood that needs it and blood that um, is sort of giving away the bad stuff and getting the good stuff in this area that's known as the arteries, the afferent and efferent, based off of this uh, orientation that we've established. Overall, what we need to understand about the gill structure is that everything within the gill of bony fish is very much arranged purposefully. So we'll state that there's a very, very purposeful arrangement of all of these substructures within this respiratory, large respiratory structure known as a gill. In addition, this purposeful arrangement to summarize is basically arranged in a way so that as water flows, as water flows across the lamellae, across those filaments that are very much an area of exchange, you're going to really ensure that the O2 uptake, this means that the oxygen that goes into the blood, thus into the rest of the system, the rest of the body, the cells in need, make sure that O2 uptake is maximized. The structure of the gills within bony fish does that because of its purposeful arrangement of afferent and efferent arteries of a specific gill arch with these two filamentous rows known as lamellae. So that's our structure of bony fish. Now what we want to conclude our discussion of gills upon is the function, the true function of gills. And the true function of gills can be understood by looking at how gills really generally work. And that's through or by what is known as a counter current exchange system. This is a very efficient way to do organismic respiration, respiration throughout the organism. Counter current exchange system is how gills really do their job. Because in a counter current exchange system, the definition states the following this is when you're going to have two fluids, 
aka blood and water, those are the two fluids of exchange, they're going to actually flow in counter directions, in counter currents, in opposite directions, in other words. That's throughout this gill area. So you're going to have counter current exchange, meaning that blood and water flow in opposite directions. This is going to allow for the following. At each point in the gill, wherever you're looking at, there's going to be a place where blood eventually meets up with water. So because they're flowing in opposite directions, at any single point within the gill, you're going to have this area at which blood will meet up with water. This will give you an opportunity for exchange, and that's exactly what we see. But what's dictating the exchange, and how is the exchange going to specifically occur if we're talking about respiration? Well, what we know is that water itself is going to possess uh, a very high oxygen content. That's because water is a very good solvent, and gases really like to dissolve in water. So water will have tons of free oxygen within it as compared to the blood that's floating and flowing within this fish right now. So we have arrangement right here of high oxygen content in water and relatively low oxygen content in the blood. This high to low scenario should be very familiar to you because this means that the partial pressure of oxygen in the water is going to be, because there's more oxygen in the water, there's more of a representation, a fraction of this gas within the entire gas mixture of the environment. Because that partial pressure in the water is higher than the partial pressure of oxygen within where? Where do you think is the, the comparison that we're doing here? It's higher, um, let's say, it's higher than the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood, that arrangement puts a perfect sort of a, a alignment for the following event to occur. You have a higher partial pressure of water as compared to the blood. You have a higher water oxygen content in the water as compared to the blood. This allows for oxygen as this really important gas that we need to get into the system for the entire system to work properly, oxygen must therefore follow the law of partial pressures and goes from an area of high partial pressure of oxygen, that would of course be the water, to an area of low partial pressure of oxygen, and that of course would be the blood. Do we want this right now? Of course we do. We want to oxygenate blood so that blood as a part of the circulatory system can go to and reach whatever cells need oxygen for them to complete and do their cell respiratory processes. The end result is that we get blood with oxygen. As a result, of this countercurrent exchange as a result of blood constantly meeting up with water flowing in opposite directions within this overall gill structure. The end all be all idea you have to understand about gills is that they're really good at this idea of gas exchange because gills, as a part of this countercurrent exchange system, all of this maximizes. It's designed and adapted in a way to maximize the diffusion of gases altogether. We have a maximization of gases. This creates a very efficient system for gas exchange, and that covers our look at gills as a respiratory structure. So we looked at body surfaces, we looked at gills. Now what we're going to be looking at specifically are tracheal systems of respiratory structures.